So we are Team Inceptor, and this is our Zoom video for entry into the Eco Challenge Patagonia 2021. Uh, and we're going to go through, my name is uh, Mike Isaacs. I am 44 years old, uh, born and raised in Long Beach, New York, and currently residing in Los Angeles, California. Uh, our team captain is Tim. Tim, introduce Hi. yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is team, uh, Tim Davis, uh, captain of Team Inceptor. Um, I'm 46 years old, and my hometown, I was actually born in Atlanta, Georgia, but I grew up in West by God, Virginia, but I have been living in the L.A. area for the last 30 years. Nicole, what do you got? So, hi, everyone. I'm Nicole. Um, I live in Anaheim Hills, California. I'm 40 years old. What else was I Did it hurt to say, say that? Did it hurt to say that you were 40? <laughs> no, because I'm still younger than you. <laughs> That's fair. Moving on, Marion. I think I'm younger than everybody here, so you can uh, say it. I think you are. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Marion. I am uh, 43, but I really count as 29, so I would technically be the youngest member. Uh, originally from Seattle, Washington, but I've been in Las Vegas, Nevada, the fabulous desert for the last 13 years. And, and Nevin. Nevin. My name is Nevin Wright. I'm 41 years old, born in Bakersfield, California, but I also have been living in Las Vegas, Nevada for about the last 15 years. All right, so there is our team. So the first question of the day, why this race? Uh, and that kind of ties in with what is it about adventure racing and what is our passion for this? So uh, for myself, why this race? Because this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the ultimate race that anybody can do. Whether you're an adventure racer, whether you're an obstacle course racer, it doesn't matter. This is an 11-day race in another country. Like, you tell me, what's another race that's going to top this? Nothing. So that's why we want to do this. Because uh, for me, you know, we've, we've all done other things, but none of us have ever done something like this. What do you guys got? I got the same thing. Why this race? Um, it's you know it's called the world's toughest race because you're with a team of four team competitors and one crew member, and you got to live and die together. If one member can't make it, you all you know got to wait and you got to work through it together. Um, I've done a lot of other kind of races, but never something like this. So I'm very excited about a new big challenge in a continent that I've never been to before. You know, and for me, it kind of is the same thing. You know, I've done several endurance races. I've done several, you know, races that have been, you know, 24 and 48 hours. And it's just, why not something, I've never done something of this magnitude to, to be able to push my body to that limit and that extreme. You know, it's kind of like the whole enchilada. That sounded really lame. But, I mean, why not? You only live once, so my body still works. I may as well use it while I can. What about you, Nevin? Um, well, this race because people ask me to do it. I, I have <laughs> a lot of really fun friends, and if they ask me to do some crazy adventure, I'm down. I don't even have to look at what it was, but knowing now that it's something insane makes it even more interesting. So I'm really looking forward to it. And Marion, knowing that you are the certified world's best pit crew member, what makes you want to join us on this adventure? Because I am the best and I am here to support you guys. And I'm, I'm really excited for that opportunity to be able to help people, you know, achieve this dream. Fantastic. So, Tim, the powers that be want to know something interesting about us. So tell us something interesting about yourself. Something interesting about me. Well, um, there's a lot of things interesting. Um, uh, recently, I wrote a book called Tripolar, the story of a bipolar triathlete. And, um, you know, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 27 years old. And I've suffered from, you know, struggled with alcoholism and addiction. And I was in denial about having bipolar disorder for a long time. And I finally got help and got sober. And I'm 13 years in recovery. But during this whole time up until this year when I wrote the book, I honestly did not like to talk about being bipolar with almost anybody. Only my close family and friends knew about it. 
I'm a high school science teacher. I didn't want my students to know about it because I thought they'd think I'm just crazy because bipolar means crazy, you know, but now, you know, I'm kind of having this coming out thing this year because I wrote this book that's, you know, for the world to read if they want to. And, uh, you know, I was afraid that my administrators and my supervisors at work might discriminate against me because I had mental health issues. But, um, you know, in the last 10 years, I've done 12 <coughs> Ironman, a double Ironman, and uh, several hundred mile races. And I'm just here to prove that people with mental health issues can do whatever they want when they put their minds to it. I like that. Nicole, tell us something interesting about you. Um, I have been doing, I've been racing since 2014. My sister kind of got me into it on a little fluke. And ever since that very first race, I have been hooked. And here we are six years later, and I'm still going strong. Yeah, but what about the two most interesting things about you? <laughs> oh, my children. Hello. <laughs> That's not I what I thought you were know. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a single mom. I have two kids. Um, you know, to be able to find the time to race and, you know, balance everything that they need is, is very challenging at times. And, you know, sometimes I don't get to train as much as I'd like because, you know, parental duties and all. But, you know... Racing has just been one of those things for me. It's kind of like my therapy, my, my happy place. It's like where I can kind of get away and reset and recharge myself so I can be the best version of myself for my children. Nice. Nevin, tell us about yourself. <laughs> me? <clears throat> Is your name Nevin? Is that oh, Donald? Can you go get Yeah, Marion, that that'd be great. <laughs> uh, I, I just I I really don't know about this part. <sighs> we could talk about the fact that you're dating a tall blonde who lives four hundred miles away. That is interesting, yes. I'm not sure why that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> because she could kick my ass, that's why. Good. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I've, I've been trying to think about what to say on this part, guys, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. That's all right. We'll come back to you. Thank you. No problem. Marion, this should be interesting. <laughs> Something interesting about me. Uh, well, uh, not only am I the pit boss, trademark, but I am also an endurance racer myself. Um, and I started racing back in 2012, just starting with obstacle course races. And then building from that, I did my first endurance event. It was a 12-hour overnighter in 2014. And as I started on this journey going from just regular small races to these big endurance events, uh, one of the things that I have found joy in and one of the things that I have learned about is teamwork. When I started my journey in 2012, I was a lone wolf. Like I was a one man show. I didn't need help. I didn't want help. And over the time and over the years, I've learned that teamwork and, and this endurance community that we live in is actually one of the greatest joys that we can experience. And, and that is the reason why, yes, I race, but I love to pit crew because I've made so many mistakes as a racer that I use those mistakes to hopefully make sure that nobody else does the same dumb stuff that I've done. So yeah, I'm I've, trying probably, to... I've probably done most of those dumb things. Me oh, too. no, 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 no. No, I take it to a whole, I take stupidity to a whole new level. Like there was a year where I wore a trash bag all the time because it rained and I never had a windbreaker. Okay. 2015, the year I bought a windbreaker. Yes. Well, if yeah. we get selected, I will buy you an eco challenge windbreaker. 
I, I, yes, yes, I will need that. But you know, a trash bag works very well and, uh, and it did keep me warm and well insulated and um, protected from the rain. So there you go. Glad right. trash bags. So my turn, uh, interesting thing about me. Uh, I started getting into, into racing and obstacle course racing back in 2016. And that was right after uh, I looked like this. Uh, I was 350 pounds and one of my bucket list items was to run one race. And I ran one race and I got sucked in. And I said, I gotta do more and I gotta do more. And in fact, uh, part of racing, I lived in New York and part of racing is what brought me out to California because I saw that there was a race in California and I Facebooked some other people and I said, hey, I'm coming to California, I don't know anyone. And because of this community, they said, come on out, hang out with us. We're all going out to dinner on Saturday night. And I came out and those people are still my friends. And one of those people I'm dating, oh yeah, she's in the room. Hi, Nicole. Amazing. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, you know, and, and it's like Marion was saying, within this community, and I'm sure it's similar with triathletes or cyclists or anybody who does sort of events like this that are constant and throughout the year, is you form those connections. And, you know, even just me and Tim, we don't know each other that well, but with Facebook and social media being what it is, we're friends because you become friends with obstacle horse racers, you become friends with triathletes, and you become friends with cyclists, because these are like-minded people who are taking their weekends and taking their days and doing their training, you know, and it's a certain type of person. And I'm sure every single person that applies to this race is of that same mindset. You know, that kind of person who wants to do better, who wants to keep challenging themselves. I know that I don't want to go back to that, to that 350 pound guy. And I'm a nurse. Try to do CPR on somebody when you can't breathe. And that's what I was doing. So I lost the weight. I'm still an ER nurse. And now I spend my weekends running around the country. Um, so that's what I do. Um, I think I can answer this one. The relationship to the other teammates, uh, the four of us, myself, Nicole, Marion, and Nevin, all uh, met each other through obstacle course racing, I think. Right, guys? Right. Nicole and I actually have, yeah, Nicole and I have a really great story about how we met. Um, it was a random OCR, and we started at the start line, both of us, you know, same time, and then we started sort of keeping pace with each other. In a, I'm the kind of person I'll talk to anything, okay? If it's near me, I'll talk to it. And so I started talking to Nicole because she was right there and she was like, we were going the same speed and blah, blah, blah. So that race, we stuck together the whole time. And that was, was it four years ago, Nicole? Yeah, it was like, Battle Frog. And yeah. Gosh, and, it's, and we have just been the best of friends ever since then. And it just all came because two people started talking to each other on a course, you know, and, and we've been, you know, we've done multiple races together. We've done, we've had so much fun. And, you know, just because of that random hello. Yeah. And I think that's how a lot of relationships in, in this community form is uh -huh. just seeing people on the race course. I mean, everybody that I know in California, I've met through racing for the most yeah. part. You know, I yeah. know a few people from work, but the majority, I mean, the majority of people that I know out here, I've done through racing. And even now all of us meeting Tim is through racing, you know, so that's, that's how, uh, that's how we got together. Um, how would you describe your teammates? Um, like I said, before we hit record, I think it's best if we um, pass this question because we don't need to discuss Mike, um, but. <laughs> no, I can describe Mike. Mike loves WWE wrestling. He is a fan and he has like 250 belts that are like the actual championship belts. So Well, when you're when you're the champion, you've got to flaunt it. I, I yeah, yeah, you you got to you got to strut your stuff, fella. That's yep. Right. Yep. I must say I, I, I like the, Mike's enthusiasm. <laughs> the the funny well, thing no about this team Well, the funny thing about this team is if you put me and Nevin next to each other, the energy levels are just completely different. Like Nevin might be the mellowest human being I've ever met in my life. Like he is just like the picture of serenity. And I've seen him on the course and even on the course, even racing, he's just mm -hmm. even keel. I will lose my mind. 
<laughs> I'm yelling at people. I'm crashing into things. I'm falling down a lot. And That's there's video of that somewhere. Yeah. Hey, and as that team that? captain, I got to remind us this video is only supposed to be five to ten minutes, so let's get really? to the next question. Yeah, yeah. So moving on, we might We're be going edit. over a little here. Moving on. Okay, moving right. on. Real easy. How is your team different than all the other teams? Well, a we're not from New Zealand. Let's start with that. We're rookies. <laughs> we're rookies, man. We've never done adventure racing like this. None of us have. Um, and while it's great to be this established team that we can do this, and we've been through this. I don't care. You got to start somewhere. And we want to start here. We want to start in Patagonia. We want to make a name for ourselves in Patagonia. And we want to represent the USA like Marion does in her little onesie. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Like we, we call ourselves Team Inceptor because we're beginners at this. We're not beginners at racing. We're not beginners at life. But we are beginners at adventure racing and we are beginners at the Eco Challenge. Uh, and I think that's going to help us because, you know, we got no reason to fail. And um, I think uh, that ties into question eight, what's unique about our team. So let's go ahead and answer question number nine. What does it mean to come together as a group to race an eco challenge? Well, I think Marion talked about that. It's teamwork. It's supporting each other. It's not, I mean, it's, it's a very, like I'm, I'm ex-military. I'm an army vet. And it's a very military concept of not leaving your brother behind. Mm -hmm. You know, you never leave a comrade behind no matter what the case. And if you got to fall with them, you fall with them. Exactly. You succeed or fail as a team, and that's what we're going to do. And the last question is, what is the goal for the race? And we all agree, we just want to finish, and we want to earn the respect of the Kiwis. <laughs> and yeah, and can, the respect of ourselves. Yeah. Well, yeah. But if I can get a handshake from, the, from last year's champion, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thanks. And if he can carry me from some of the race. Thank you to the Eco Challenge powers that be for watching our video. I hope that you think about all the aspects of our team and your selection process. We got a military vet and nurse. We got a high school science teacher with bipolar disorder. We got a single mom with two children. We got a union laborer and Marion. I forgot what you did because I, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I'm the pit boss. She's the pit boss. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I'm going to hit stop on the record button now. <laughs>